The JK flip-flop. The JK flip-flop is the last circuit we will examine. This block diagram shows the JK flip-flop. It has three inputs and two outputs. The inputs are labelled J and K and the other input is used for a clock signal. The outputs are labelled Q and Q0. Q0 is the inverse of Q. This is the logic diagram for the JK flip-flop. Notice that there are two NAND gate flip-flops used in the circuit. The first flip-flop is the master and the second is the slave. This helps to prevent the do not use condition found in the basic NAND flip-flops we discussed earlier. The clock input is a constant high-low signal which will control when Q and Q0 will change condition. Also notice that the inputs J and K have small circles at the input. This means that this is a negative edge triggered JK flip-flop, meaning that the output will change the next time the clock pulse goes to zero. The truth table for this circuit is as follows. When J and K are set at zero, on the next negative clock pulse, the outputs will remain the same. When J is zero and K is one, on the next negative clock pulse, Q will be at zero and Q naught will be at one. The flip-flop will be in reset condition. When J is one and K is zero, on the next negative clock pulse, Q will be at one and Q naught will be at zero. The flip-flop is in the set condition. When J and K are both set at 1, the flip-flop will go into toggle condition, meaning that on each negative clock pulse, the flip-flop will switch between reset and set condition. Let's go to the simulator to get a clearer picture of what the JK flip-flop does in each setting. So here we have the JK flip-flop set up in the simulator. The J, K and clock input have a logic switch connected to them. We will change the clock input to a clock pulse later in the tutorial, but for now we will use a single input in order to see the effect of the negative clock input. At the output there are LEDs and current limiting resistors. Q has a green LED and Q0 has a red LED. When we start the simulation, the red LED at Q0 lights up. Both J and K are at zero. When we switch the clock input between zero and one, nothing happens. Zero, zero is the no change condition. Let's now change J to 1. We want to put the flip-flop into set condition but this will not happen until the clock goes into its next zero state. So if we turn the clock input on then off again we will see the change. The green LED lights up. Now when we input a zero on J again and run another clock cycle, Q stays lit as the flip-flop is in no change condition. If we now input a one on K and run the clock cycle again, the red LED lights up. The flip-flop is now in reset condition. 
putting K back to zero and running the clock cycle again puts the flip-flop back into no change condition. Let's now input a 1 on J and a 1 on K and change the clock input between 0 and 1. Notice that each time the clock input has a 0, the flip-flop changes between set and reset condition. The flip-flop is in toggle condition. Let's change the input on the clock to a logic train and examine the waveform viewer. Here we have the logic train running on the clock input of the flip-flop. The simulation speed is 1 millisecond per second, clock speed is 1 millisecond, and the gate delay on the flip-flop is 10 microseconds. The clock, Q and Q0 are highlighted so we can see what state the signals are in at each point. As we can see by the blue waveform, the clock input is changing between 0 and 1 constantly. Both J and K are at 0. The red LED is lit, so the flip-flop is in reset condition. If we change J to 1, the green LED lights up, but notice how the outputs for Q and Q0 did not change until the clock pulse returned to zero. When we return J to zero, there is no change. So let's change K to one, and we'll, we will see again the reset condition does not happen until the clock returns to zero. Let's now place the flip-flop into toggle condition. The flip-flop is changing between set and reset and we can clearly see after a few clock cycles that the change happens on the negative clock cycle. The flip-flop changes condition every two clock cycles and this is a very useful state as we can now move to the next circuit where we build a binary counter. To build this circuit, we need four JK flip-flops and place them side by side. On the J input of the first flip-flop, we connect a logic switch and set it to 1. We then connect the J input of all the other flip-flops to this. We then connect all the K inputs to the J inputs. We then need a logic train and connect it to the first flip-flop's clock input. The Q0 output of each flip-flop connects to the clock input of the next flip-flop except for the last one. That's it. Let's go to the simulator and try it out. Simulator speed is 10 milliseconds. Clock speed is 10 milliseconds and the logic gate delay is 100 microseconds. Let's firstly look at the clock pulse output. As we can see from the waveform viewer, it is changing between 0 and 1 and is at a frequency of 100 Hz. Let's compare this to the output of the first flip-flop. Notice that the first flip-flop's output also changes between 0 and 1, but the clock has to complete two cycles for every one cycle. The frequency is also 50 Hz, half of the original clock input. Let's now highlight the second flip-flop output and compare it to the clock. The clock completes four cycles before the second input completes one. Frequency is 25 Hz. With the third, we divide the clock cycles and frequency again. 
eight clock cycles for every one cycle on the third input. Frequency is 12.5 Hz. The fourth input takes the longest time to complete. The clock has to run 16 cycles for every one cycle at the fourth output. This type of circuit is called a mod 16 counter. It will count to 16 in binary. We can continue to chain more flip-flops together to create higher numbers. Let's add LEDs to the outputs and watch the circuit count. With the four LEDs connected, we can see them switching on and off to represent the binary values of 1, 2, 4 and 8. The circuit will continually count from 0 to 15, then reset. We can replace the LEDs for a binary to 7 segment decoder and a 7 segment LED in order to see the value the circuit is outputting. Notice that occasionally the numbers will go out of sequence but this is due to the delay on the logic gates and adjusting the timing will improve this. This is an extremely useful circuit and there are a number of variations which can be built to create different output values. If we were to connect the Q outputs of the flip-flop to the decoder, the output would count from 15 back to zero. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will look at the counter circuit. Please feel free to ask questions and leave comments. All the best.